Today we are looking at Theacam, a 13 megapixel phase detection autofocus UVC camera from Fine Solutions. Let's see what's in the box. Let's see, here's a USB cable. And here's the camera itself. It's mounted on acrylic to help protect it. On the bottom here is the USB 3 micro B connector. You can clearly see the ISP chip. Remember to remove the lens protective film before use. The acrylic case has a standard quarter inch 20 thread for mounting on standard photographic equipment. Here it's being mounted on a magic arm. Plug it into the Jetson and we are ready to go. This is a standard plug and play camera, but for our demo, we'll do a little bit more. On the Jetson Hex account on GitHub, there is a repository named camera-caps. Let's scroll down a little. We are going to install our dependencies. sudo minus v sets up our admin rights, password. Then we install pip data classes, v4l utils, and python3 pyqt5. Let's take a look at the cameras that we have connected. We have two Thea cams connected. One is reporting incorrectly. We'll need to update the firmware. We'll cover that later in the video. Let me update the firmware and we'll try it again. That's better. Two Thea cams and a webcam that we will use for comparison. Let's look at the image formats available from the Thea cam. We are connected via USB 3 for YUYV, which is basically a raw format. We have 640 by 480, 640 by 360, 1280 by 720, 1920 by 1080, and 2016 by 1512, all at 30 frames per second. Then we have Motion JPEG, which is a slightly compressed format, 4160 by 3120 at 20 frames per second, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, and 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. This is a video for Linux camera demo program I wrote for Jetsons. Let's clone the repository and switch over to that repository's directory. Next, we check out the Jetpack 5X ROI branch. Finally, we are ready to run our program. Let me switch mics here. We're looking at the Theocam on video zero. You can see the different pixel formats that are offered. Let's take a look at the uncompressed video, 1920 by 1080. There we are. Go full screen. You can see that it's a relatively good picture. You can see the details on my thermal shirt here. Let me get out of the way and reveal some of our friends. Oh, there's the shark. Let's get this a little bit bigger. These objects are about four feet away. No, this is not the full resolution of the sensor. Let's switch this back over into full resolution. This is a little bit bigger. You see the colors changed. Looks a lot nicer now. Go full screen. Take a look at our friends again. And you also notice that it auto focuses. This is phase auto detection focusing. Let's take a look at close focus capabilities. We'll take a look at the post Verilog 1460. Let's see if we can focus in on this. Those are millimeters. It gives you a feel for what it's up close. It's about two inches away from the camera. Pull it back. You can see how fast it auto focuses. Let's set it up so that it does not resize the video image to fit into the window. Set the render rectangle. Let's make this full screen. Oh, that's a little scary. 
a little bit out of focus. That's better. Oh, that's a little too close for comfort. Look into my eyes. <laughs> and then we have the manual controls for it. And set the brightness. Contrast. Saturation. Hue. It's a little too happy looking. These are the commands that are available through UBC. Ooh, white balance. Gamma. That's kind of fun. Power line frequency. Here it's 60 hertz. Sharpness. So back to the default. Defaults are usually pretty good. Looks like backlight compensation. Then you get down to auto exposure. I always fail at this part. Go into manual mode. That's a little too dark. Again, automatic usually seems to be about the best. Exposure auto priority. That helps you in low light situations. Go back to auto mode. And autofocus. So you can turn the autofocus on. Go up to our the face is out of focus. My face is in focus here. For it to focus on the ruler, I need to be a little bit closer. Again, that's about two inches away. But you can see it doesn't hop back to focusing on my face. Let's turn autofocus back on. There I am. If you're looking for 1920 by 60 frames per second, let's take a look at that real quick. So that gives you a faster frame rate. That's pretty interesting. Let's open up another one here. Both of these are at 3840. The one on the left here has been in projects, so its color is a little bit off. It's probably because the lens is dirty. Probably crashed it too many times. <laughs> Autofocus got a little messed up. <laughs> it's pretty much equivalent to an iPhone 12 camera. One more. Let's compare this to a regular old webcam. Take a look at that. Of course, you can't zoom on it very effectively. It's 1920 by 1080, so. The Thea games have about twice the resolution and better color management. You can get this camera in a MIPI format for 3840 by 2160 resolution. I'll have a review of that in a separate video. Let's go over how to update the camera firmware. It's a three-step process. You can do this on Windows or Macintosh. We'll need to download and install the camera extension controller, download the camera firmware. Then we need to download from Cypress Infineon the Easy USB FX3 software development kit. I'm doing this on a Windows 10 machine. You should read the instructions for any updated information. Let's scroll down here. We'll download the camera extension controller. 
Scroll down a little further. Now we download the camera firmware. Let's open the download folder. Double click on camera extension controller. Fortunately, Windows is stopping me from doing exactly what I want to do. That appears to be working. Let's close it up. Let's take a look at the firmware readme file. We're on CX3 1.58 and THP 7312 3.69. Next up, we install the Easy USB FX3 SDK. This will take us over to the Cypress Infineon website. We select the package that we need and download it. You'll need to register for an account to continue. After downloading, let's open up the download folder. Double click and it's a standard Windows install. Now we're ready to update the firmware on the camera. We need to turn the camera on to update it. We open up the camera app. Then we select the camera that we want to update. It says the camera app needs to be running all the time. Now we open the camera extension controller. Let's get the current firmware version. There's a whole set of lower level parameters you can set for the camera here. Now we erase the firmware. Then we enter 77 again to verify our intentions. Now we open up our USB control center. This is running on an old PC, so I have to do a little extra setup. These steps are all covered in the instructions. Open up Device Manager. Other Devices and Westbridge. Then we need to install the driver. Hit Update Driver. Then we go hunting for the driver on our drive. After the hunt, the driver is installed. Everything is good in the world. Oops, I almost forgot. We need to extract the camera firmware. Let's go back to the USB control center. Program FX3 SPI flash. Now we select our camera firmware. It begins flashing, it takes about 30 seconds or so. Installation complete. This is a UVC camera, so we should be able to use the cheese application to look at it. Chess. That's not it. Preferences. Thea cam. That's more like it. These are all the YUYVs, 2016. Let's see what that looks like. Photo resolution, crank that up to full screen. Well, that's about right. Let's take a photo. I'll put it on my serious face. This is my serious face. What do we have? Yep, that looks serious. Getting ready to cross the Delaware or something. Hey, 